Have you known someone who was at one time very faithful to the Lord? They were very faithful in the church. They worked in the church. They served. They were very, very faithful. But now they have gone back to the world. What are the dynamics of this? Have you, since you've been saved, thought about going back to one of your old sins? something that you were involved in years ago. You have thought about it, and you have been tempted to go back. Have you been there? Let's talk about this. This is a very serious matter and a uh, proposition that I want to present today to help us with this temptation to go back. Get your Bibles and turn to the book of Luke chapter 9 and verse number 61. Luke chapter 9, verse number 61. Jesus has some things to say to us about this particular situation. I want to read uh, this passage along with another passage that we will look at later on, but the foundation uh, of our subject uh, rests on two particular passages. One is in Luke chapter 9 in verse Number 61. Listen to what Jesus says. And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. Let's look at this idea of turning back. Turning back or looking back. That's the subject for our Bible study on today. Turning back or looking back. Jesus paints a picture of a person plowing a field. Can you get the picture? The individual is plowing the field. This is back in the days when there were plows, a, a manual plow that was pulled by an oxen or an animal. And picture this person plowing the field. And somehow there is a highway that's next to the plow field, the plowing field rather, and something gets his attention. He is distracted. And he looks and he keeps looking back. And Jesus says that this individual that looks back is not fit for the kingdom of God. Let's make it plain. You, you are driving down the road and, and you uh, somehow are distracted. Distracted driving has killed millions of, millions of people. You're driving down the road, driving down the street, and you are distracted, and you almost have a wreck, or maybe you do have a wreck. You are distracted. And maybe if Jesus was here today, he might say, uh, you don't deserve to drive. Pull your license. But Jesus says that this individual is not fit for the kingdom of God. This young man came to Jesus and said, Jesus, I, I want to follow you, but let me go back and bid my uh, relatives farewell. Jesus, with x-ray eyes, probably saw if this young man went back, he would not come back. So he would not allow him to go back and bid his family farewell. This is the message that we want to explore today. This idea of going back, 
going back to the world or going back to a sin that you have been freed from years ago. You have been freed, you have been brought into the kingdom of God, and you have been translated, as it were, in the, to the kingdom of light. And now there is a temptation, that old temptation comes back. And you thought about going back. You were tempted to go back to a particular sin that you were involved in years ago. That's what we're going to talk about today. Don't go back and don't look back because if you go back, it's worse than before. That's what the Bible says. I want you to read another passage of scripture with me. Study another passage of scripture with me. Uh, 2 Peter chapter number 2 and verse number 20 beginning. Listen to this. Listen to it very intensely. For if after they have escaped the pollution of the world through the knowledge of of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandments delivered unto them. They come next. Like Climaxic verse is verse number 22. But it has happened unto them according to the true Proverbs. The dog has returned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. That's a picture of an individual who has turned back to the world. They have come out of the world. They have been saved, and now they are going back into the world. Some would argue that this person was really not saved. I beg the difference. If you look at many of the uh, phrases in this particular passage, it indicates that this person was saved. They ex escaped the pollution of the world, the Bible, the, the, the passage says, they had the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ and the Savior. They, they, they were, from all indications, they were in a safe condition, according to this passage. I want you to notice some words and some phrases here that should catch your eye. Look at the word pollution. The pollution in the world, sin will pollute you. Sin is a cesspool. It will cause you to stink. I want you to look at another word or another phrase. Again entangled. They have come out of the world and now they are again entangled. The word entangled means trap, like you trap an animal. That's what sin would do. Sin will trap you. Then look at this very important phrase. The latter end is worse. Mark that down. The latter end is worse. If you go back to your old sin and if you go back to the world, the latter end is worse than the first. You are worse off than you were before. Somebody said, why? This is why. Are you listening? Every time you go back to sin, Every time you go back to sin, the grips of sin gets tighter. Let me say it again. I say it every time you go back to sin, every time you revisit sin, the grip of sin gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And that's the why. And that's why the latter end is worse than before. The text says that it would have been better that you have not even obeyed the gospel of Christ, talking about those who have gone back to the world. It would have been better not to have known the way of righteousness, the Bible says, than to have known it and gone back. Then he gives two graphic illustrations. 
graphic illustrations of a dog that has eaten and become nauseated and then he vomits up the, the content of his stomach and then he eats that same vomit again. How nauseating that is. That's the way sin is. That's the way the individual is who have come out of sin and then goes back to sin. The other one is the illustration of a pig or a hog that has been washed. Washed and clean, get ready for the market. If you don't watch a hog or a pig uh, and you wash them up, they'll go right back in the mud again. That's the illustration that Peter gives here in this particular passage of Scripture. Don't look back at the past because the only thing that you can do with the past is learn from it. The only thing you can do with the past is learn from the past. Have you learned anything from the past? Have you learned anything from your past sins? If you have not learned anything, you are doomed to repeat it. Someone said a long time ago, I'm, I, I've been there and I've done that and I got the scars to prove it. Oh, yes, sin will leave some scars. Been there, done that, and it will leave scars. All of us have some skeletons in the closet. Yes, we do. All of us have a past. And many of our passes, if I may use that term, it's not too pretty. And many of us spend a lifetime trying to, to, to board up the closet where the skeletons are. We are ashamed and we don't want anybody to know. We don't want our relatives and friends to know. And certainly we don't want our employers to know. And we are forever kneeling up the closet where the skeletons are. Let me ask you something. If you had to do it all over again, what would be some changes you would make to your past? I say, if you had the opportunity to go back and, and change some things in your past, what would that be? Or what would there be that you would want to change? Think about that for just a moment. Just a moment. There will be some who would change their marriage. I'm always talking about marriage in the home because that's where we live. That's where we are. There was a survey that said 65% of all people, of all married couple, would not marry the same person if they had the opportunity again. That's serious. That says that, that something is wrong in our selection of a marital partner. 65% said that they wouldn't marry the same person. If you had to do it all over again, would you marry the, first, the same person that you are married to today? Don't say amen too loud because the person may, your spouse may hear you. Would you marry the same person? Something else. There are some things that we wouldn't say if we had to go back and change. We would go back and change some things that we've said in the past. There are some individuals that would change their career or change their job. They would not go back into the same career or the same job. There are, some in, there are some changes. There are some individuals that will go back and finish their high school diploma. There are some individuals that will probably go on to college. If you had to change some things in your past, what would they be? This is the point. This is the reason I'm asking this question. Because if there are some things that you can change, go ahead and change them. But if there are some things in your past that you cannot change, you need to forget about them and move on. Move on. There are some things that you cannot change. Oh, this is what Jesus says. Oh, thankful for Jesus. 
and thankful for the Christian life. Jesus says, you must be born again. When the Holy Spirit comes into our lives and when we accept Jesus Christ, it's like being born all over again. Nicodemus asked Jesus a question, can a man enter in a second time into his womb and be born? What a ignorant question it was. No, Jesus is talking about a rejuvenation of your life, a change in your life, a drastic change in your life. You are born again. You accept Jesus Christ. The Bible also said these words. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new. You are a new creation now. You have new goals and new aspirations, and, and you have a, a different or a new direction in life. And you become a Christian. And the only way that you can turn back the hands of time, as it were, is to become a Christian and live the Christian life. It's like being born all over again, a new creature or a new creation. Listen to this. Your future is better than your past. I don't care how good your past may have been, but your, your future is better than your past has for one particular reason you can change your future but you can't change your past i said you can change your future but you cannot change your past and for that reason your future is better than your past don't live in the past move on listen to this Never, 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 never try to recreate the past. Let me say it again. Never try to recreate the past. I hear people all the time talking about the good old days. There was something in their past that was good, a moment of time that in their past that was good, and they, they wish to go back to the good old days. But you can't do that. You can't do that. Listen to what Solomon says, a wise man that said these wise words in Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse number 10. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. Did you hear that? Why are you actually talking about the good old days and why the former days or the old days were good or gooder than these days? He said, that's not wise. It's not wise to talk about the good old days and try to recreate the good old days. And I see people all the time trying to recreate the past. They, they, they move back to their uh, particular place that they enjoyed they move back and they try to go back to their old job and they they try to go back to old relationship and they trying to recreate the past but it's impossible it's impossible because people change it's impossible because circumstances change friends change People change. And so the best that we can do is move on and not try to create the past. Something else when we talk about the past. Don't look back at the past with grudges and bitterness. Don't look back at the past with grudges and bitterness. Remember those words by Paul in Philippians chapter 3 and verse number 13. Let me remind you again of those of that particular passage. He says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before me. 
I'm forgetting about the things that are in the past. I'm reaching forth the things in the future. There are some things that Paul had to forget about. There were some situations, there were some bad people that Paul had to forget about if he was going to move on. Remember the time in Acts chapter 14 and verse number 19, some Jews, his own brethren, stoned him and left him for dead. It was so serious, they stoned him. They didn't kill him, but they, they almost killed him. That's something Paul had to forget. He had to forget. And do you remember when, when Paul was at Damascus? Again, they tried to kill him. If it were not for some of the brethren that led him over a wall in a basket, they would have killed him. And then again, in Jerusalem, they, they wanted to kill Paul. There were a mob, a greedy mob, that, that tried and wanted to kill Paul. Paul had to forget about that. Do you remember the man, Alexandria? Paul talks about him in 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 4. He said, Alexander the coppersmith had done me much evil, much evil. All of this stuff, all of this stuff that happened to Paul. Has anybody ever stoned you? Has anybody ever tried to kill you? I'm sure that many of us have been abused by somebody, misused and abused. But you got to forget about it. And move on. And Paul was saying, I got to move on. I, I have to forget about all of that in the past. People abused me, uh, misused me, tried to kill me. I have to forget about all of that in the past. I have to forget about it. Somebody asked a question, and we've explored this before. How do you forget about all of that stuff? Somebody abuse you and misuse you and almost kill you. How do you forget about all of that? How do you forget and forgive all of that stuff? We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. There are, there are several ways in which you can forgive and forget. We talked about this. Do you remember the lesson? About Joseph. Joseph was able to forgive and forget all of the stuff that had happened to him, all of the sin. And he said these words in Genesis chapter 41, in verse number 51, he said, God had made me to forget. It was God that helped me to forget. And my friend, we all need God. Help us with all of the stuff in the past to overcome and forget all of us abuse in the past, someone has abused you. And you're going to need God to help you because you can't do it by yourself. How do you forget it? No revenge. We talked about that. Don't try to get revenge. Don't waste your try time trying to get revenge to those individuals that who, are, who have wronged you, who have misused you and abused you. Don't waste your time. Because that's not your business. God said, vengeance is mine and I will repay. That's God's business. Then the Bible says, we need to do something else. We need to pray for the individual. Jesus said that, Matthew chapter 5. Pray for your enemies. You want to overcome the bitterness and the hatred and all of that? Jesus says, pray for them. Pray for your enemies. And then finally, you want to forget? You need to write this down. You, need, you want to forget the bitterness? The, you want to forget the abuse and, and all of that? Get, write this down. Romans chapter number 12 and verse number 20. Therefore, if thy enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Doing good to the person. Somebody say, great, you crazy. 
If I'm crazy, then Jesus is crazy. And I dare you to call him crazy. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5, do good unto them that abuse you. You want to really overcome? You want to really overcome the, 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 the misuse and abuse and all of that? Do good to those that abuse you and misuse you. That's how you overcome it. That's how you overcome the bitterness. And yes, there is uh, something else that we need to understand as we look uh, at this idea of looking back and going back and returning back. Um, if you keep on looking back, it prevents you from going forward. Let me say it again. If you keep on looking back and you're living in the past, it keeps you from moving on. You know the reason why Israel spent 40 years in the wilderness? It was only a couple of weeks' journey from Egypt to of the promised land. And they spent 40 years wandering in the wilderness because they were always looking back to Egypt. Looking back to Egypt. Let me read this scripture to you. And uh, this is what they said in Numbers, Numbers chapter 11 and verse 5 and 6. We remember the, the fish which we did eat in Egypt. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions and the garlic. But our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna before us. Numbers chapter 11 and verse 5 and 6. They were always remembering Egypt. Egypt. They could never go back. Or they could never go forward because they were always looking back. And then don't go back to your old sins. Jesus said, remember. Remember Lot's wife. Remember that situation? God was about to destroy those wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh, he told Lot and his family, I want you to flee to the mountains. I'm going to rain down fire and brimstone. Flee to the mountain and don't look back. And the Bible says that while they were fleeing, the Bible says that Lot's wife looked back. And she became a pillar of salt. She was destroyed. Don't look back. Don't look back. My friends, I ask the question, what was she looking back for? What was she looking back? That wicked city is on fire with fire and brimstones. And God specifically said, don't look back. But she had to look back. What was she looking at? Perhaps she was looking at her stuff back there burning up. Perhaps she was looking back because of old friends and relatives. I don't know what she was looking back for, but Jesus said, or God said, don't look back. And that's what God tells us in reference to our old sins. Don't look back. You've come out of sin. Don't look back. Don't look back. Don't look back. Many of us have come out of alcoholism. Escape. Don't look back. Some of us have come out of, uh, of drug addiction. Don't look back. Some have come out of pornography. Don't look back. Some have come out of homosexuality. Don't look back. Some have come out of adultery and fornication. But don't you look back. Keep on going. There have been some ladies who have come, who have been freed and escaped the clutches of an abusive relationship. Don't you look back and don't you go back to that situation again. Don't look back. That's the message. Perhaps there's someone here today who gone back to the world for being saved. You need to come back. Come back to Jesus. The best life that you can live is in Christ Jesus. Back there in the world, you're going back to the world, you think you're living it up. The worst thing that you can do. Come back. You're here today. You're thinking about going back to an old sin. Do not go back. That's the message. 
Sister Brother James Ray, the minister of Eastside Church of Christ, we love you. May God richly bless you.